Welcome back to the Engineering Workshop. I'm Hunter White. In this episode, we're going to make a gift for 0326 on the CNC. Thanks for watching. I start drawing my model by importing the team logo, then creating a sketch in Fusion 360. I can then create the model by extruding different portions of the sketch to get a logo in three dimensions. I then add sketches on top of the services. This will allow me to engrave features without having to model 3D contours. Stepping into the cam, I'm going to start with a 2D contour toolpath to cut along the outside of the model. I'll use a quarter inch two flute upcut bit for this at uh, 70 inches per minute. The next toolpath is a 2D adaptive clear with the same quarter inch end mill. I'll then switch to an eighth inch ball nose bit to clean everything up. And finally, I'll use a 60 degree V engraving bit to carve out the lettering, the features in the wings, the tail, and then finally the knife handle. I'll then run a chamfer around all the edges. One of my favorite features of Fusion 360 is the simulation. I love being able to run a simulation of the cam that I've developed, so this can help me figure out if I've done something wrong um, or if it's not going to act as, uh, as I would have expected. So this has saved me a bunch of errors, I'm sure. Here we see carving the 3D contour and then going into the adaptive clear. Um, and a lot of times I can use this to maximize my efficiency to get the cutting time down. So this has also been really helpful. So we go from the adaptive clear of the quarter inch two flute upcut bit um, to a eighth inch ball nose end mill. And that uh, kind of cleans everything up. And with this hardwood, which is European beach that I'm using, it took a lot of sanding away. These came out almost perfectly um, ready to go, uh, minus the tabs that I'm using to hold the piece in place. Um, and then finally, I'm just looking at the engraving here. Um, and the engraving worked really, really well. I was very happy with, uh, with how this went. Um, and the simulation saved me actually from a crash where uh, my engraving bit was too wide to get into a certain spot. So I was able to uh, kind of change some things in my cam and really avoid a potential problem later on. For my work holding, I'm using a half inch piece of plywood as a backer board because I got real tired of carving into the waste board on the CNC and I'm using blue painter's tape with some CA glue. CA glue on one side, some activator on another. Um, it works really well, I haven't had any issues with it. And finally setting the zero with the uh, Carbide 3D bit zero. This is a huge time saver if you're uh, considering getting it. I was asked for some audio testing on the CNC enclosure that I built. Um, and so this kind of shows with the door open and the door closed, and that audio is unedited. So it's just um, straight up what the uh, audio was coming out of the CNC. So you can tell that closing the door makes a huge difference. Very happy with the sound dampening of the CNC enclosure. It makes it easy to have a conversation in the shop uh, while the CNC is running. It also really takes away like the annoying hum that you hear uh, generally with the CNC. So I really appreciate that too. The next step is to change out that quarter inch flat end mill for an eighth inch ball nose bit. And this is such a, so annoying. I am going to build an automatic tool changer. And in this instance, you can hear the sound difference of that eighth inch ball nose bit that's just doing the cleanup, how quiet that really is. And it is actually pretty pleasant to hear in the shop. Um, so very, very happy again with the enclosure. So for everyone that was asking.
And that's the final product coming off the CNC. Took a little wire brush to kind of clean up some of the fuzz that was left behind, but overall really, really happy with it. Um, and happy with the accuracy of the Shapoko. You can see a couple lines um, where it might have been like a tenth of a millimeter off, but overall very pleased. And next I use a scroll saw to kind of cut those tabs free. This is about the fastest way I could find. Um, probably had too many tabs, but being that I didn't want to screw this up, I erred on the side of caution and just held everything in place with a million freaking tabs that took forever to cut off, but oh well. And I tricked my beautiful wife into finishing this with the chisel because she is much better at it than I am. To add some color to the birds, I'm applying different stains to different parts of the bird. I did this once before and the stain ran all over and the lines weren't clean and it looked terrible. So um, I got a tip from my neighbor that if I stain or sealed it first with like an oil-based stain, which I'm using here, you might, I might be able to prevent the stain from running um, through the wood grain and then actually affecting like the clean lines. I'm using this like green painters tape, but ultimately it didn't really work very well. Um, kind of my point and lesson learned here is that if I really wanted to get clean lines with stain, these all need to be different components, um, all CNC'd separately and then eventually glued together um, at the end. So here I'm applying the stain and it, it looks great here. Um, you can't you can't really tell, but once I take it off, there was a lot of sanding and a lot of chiseling and things like that to kind of pull up the wood that was contaminated and where the lines were blurred and so on and so forth. Just being a perfectionist here was a real pain in the ass. The next part of this project, I'm making a backer board out of walnut for the bird to be glued on. The outline is the Diopresso Liber SF Crest. Um, I'm just doing a contour tool path to cut this out with the same quarter inch two flute end mill. Um, and here I run a quick simulation and then get after it with the CNC. This one was pretty quick, uh, really no drama and um, worked out really well. The walnut is absolutely beautiful. So very pleased with that. And I like the outline. Um, it's recognizable for guys that um, see the logo a lot so they kind of know what it is and it has a little bit of symbolism to the logo that we didn't necessarily previously have before. This is the mess you get if you take off the dust boot to try to get better filming. Definitely not worth it. It was a friggin' disaster. Next, I'm cutting out 0326. Just some lettering to go around the bird to be glued onto the backer board. So using a quarter inch two flute upcut bit, same one I've been using, um, 70 inches a minute with a plunge rate of 40 inches a minute. Um, I got this wrong three different times, uh, so some lessons learned here. Um, in this first attempt that we're watching, um, I'm using a font that matched the logo pretty closely, but it just wasn't ever meant to um, be subjected to subtractive manufacturing. And so what I found is the as the parts of the numbers that kind of looped around, they got real thin, and there was just too much stress. So up here in a second, you're going to see me break off the... Uh, tip of the six, which was real unfortunate. And also, if you look at the bottom of the three, that gets broken off here in a bit too. Um, so that was mildly frustrating, but it's just part of machining and part of it. So as an engineer, you figure out how to create a solution for your problem and then you drive on. Yeah, you see the two brakes right there. Just too thin to handle the stress. So for attempt number two, naturally I changed the font, uh, but also I noticed with the quarter inch bit, which I wanted to use to avoid breaking the bit, um, I had to really adjust the font and add some fillets and radius to certain parts of the font so that I could actually get the bit down in there so that the, I could fully machine out the three, two, and the six. And then I misaligned this, and as you can see right there, I don't have all the zero, unfortunate. Time to try again. So for the third attempt, 
Um, I actually ended up switching out the wood, so this is a mahogany, and I decided to make the lettering or the numbering a little bit thinner, so this is now a quarter inch thick as opposed to half inch thick. And I think I finally got it right this time. Um, it actually looks good, so I'm just gonna stop here and uh, drive on. And the final step, just gluing that bird onto the uh, backer board, using some type on two glue with a little bit of CA glue um, to kind of work as like a clamp. I do have some clamps I'm gonna use, but the CA glue was another afterthought and it just all, I was just kind of throwing everything at this, just wanted to get it done and make it stick. So um, yeah, gluing the, gluing the numbers on and, and the bird and then uh, applying finish. Well, that's going to wrap this up. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up so more people can find this content. If you like the CNC enclosure, I have plans available on my Etsy store. Link in the description. Have a good one. See you in the next one.